Welcome back to TD Fins Talk subscriber Q and A. Uh, the last video, if you watched it, um, y'all tell me what you think about it um, in the comment section of that video. But I'm gonna continue with the questions because that video, um, one of the questions from David, had me going, just thinking about the organization as a whole in depth, and it, I just kept going, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, my inner thoughts of how I think about the organization. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and continue so that we can get through some other questions, some really good questions that I noticed. One second, guys. Let me pull them up. All right. So we're going to start with, hell yeah, brother, go Fins. Is Wesley Johnson going to be our starting center? I already answered that. I'm sorry, guys. Um, let's see here. Emmanuel Bradley, do you think we still have a chance to get a Super Bowl with all the, the injuries? We still, anybody still has a chance, but I think that, um, I think that we need to make the appropriate moves to feel real good about those chances. Uh, we definitely have a chance. It, it's not a good, great look at all. Our chances definitely have dove um, from all of these injuries, but we have to look at what they bring in to replace and how well they do. You never know, guys. The reality is it could be a blessing. We might have a center that start this week that's like, wow, changes the game, changes the whole run game. Might have a, a guard that does the same thing, an interior defensive lineman that's like run stopping and not letting them get nothing, and it's like a, a revelation. Not likely, but you don't know. So um, it's hard to say, but our chances did take a dive. But we got to see um, how these new additions look. Um, from day one or even longer than that is it going to be progressing because we can't expect someone to just be excellent we would like for that to be though but, that, um, but not likely to be the case all right so um jc forrester what do you think about gay's third down play calling as in short passes and dives i don't like it at all okay but it's not for it's first, second, and third sometimes. It just depends. Not like if, if the plays were working yesterday, we wouldn't be saying this. But I mean, he had a history of just, you know, we, we question the play calling a lot of times, especially in the past. But you know, sometimes again, you don't know the coach is trying to work out of his strengths. Um, but that wouldn't be saying much, which would actually be crazy if that was the case. But it could be, you know. Um, not only that. You also have to look at the fact that Adam Gase, he may know how this team could be, but on every single one of those plays, somebody could have missed an assignment. We don't know, guys. It's just, it's so much you don't know, but that's why you have to be in tune and in depth with the team. And I try my be very best to be in depth to come up with a great conclusion. But right now, it's not enough information for us to know. But I can tell you what, with these new players coming in, it will definitely tell us a lot about the coach's ability to get players up and going and improve, um, especially the Cincinnati game. Is it something where they cleaned up some stuff this week that they know they did wrong and it shows in the coaching? The win will show in the coaching. You know, even in a loss, a really tough one would show the coaching. Uh, I'm just being honest. I feel we're going to win, but I'm just giving you what, what it would look like um, that'll show that. That's coaching that helped that. Um, but the third down calls, you also got to go with what the defense is doing and what your offensive line looks like right now. The coaches know that my offensive line gives me one second. My offensive line gives me two seconds. My offensive line gives me three. My offensive line gives me four. My offensive line gives me... You see what I mean? They know their fun point. So if it's third and ten... Know your offense is only going to give 10 of your three seconds. All it takes is one man to be halfway beat, and that three seconds turns into 2.5. And this play is so big, the best thing to do, first and foremost, is get the ball out of his hands right away. That way we avoid the first thing that we're concerned about. They just try to make their play calling the most efficient, effective for that moment. So think of a, a coach's head in that moment. Man, my line only gives my quarterback three seconds, so I can't be throwing to the 12-yard line. Or it has to be a play where the ball is already out of the quarterback's hand and it's meeting him on the 12. But that can't happen because the defense know we're in an obvious pass situation. So they are already guarding the sticks. So if I'm throwing a ball that's already in the air trying to meet um, the receiver, 
that means the defense has time as well to follow that ball. You know, it's not like they're following a player. I mean, third and 10, third and 12, they're not in man-to-man coverage a lot of times. That's an easy call for zone at the sticks. Let everything, they can catch anything they want as long as it stays in front. But anybody starts to burn speed around the seven yards, then we'll go follow. But it's a three-second play. The line only going to give three seconds. So that's not likely. Stay at the sticks. That's why it's not easy to get those plays. Now, don't get me wrong. Think about the teams that do get the third and 12. Down, said, huh? If they have a great offensive line that's giving them four seconds, they can run almost any play they want. But if their offensive line is giving them two and a half, they are limited on the plays. And the ones who are successful are usually to the outside receivers just throwing it up. Hut! And hitting them on the sideline. Can we get something happening? You see what I mean? That's it. Or if your team gives you the three and a half, you can run a play where he he runs with the receiver. Now the receiver says, oh, he's going deeper than this. Let me start, but it's a comeback. You might get those. But it's not easy. It's not easy at all. That's why I think Gase is um, going to, this is an obvious passing situation. They are going to be rushing the quarterback and not playing the run whatsoever at all. And at the end of the day, in moments like this, we have to, with our offensive line giving 2.5, our best bet is to get it out of his hands right away. Get it out of his hands. And let's see with our speed, because sometimes these plays work. But I will say, on those plays, we shouldn't be using bubble screens. We shouldn't be using, if anything, do a jet sweep. Let that man be in full speed because it, full speed because at least it gives him an option. And now we got some linemen pulling. We got some corners that actually, if they're gonna play the sticks, they can run up and really engage their man. Versus a play where they're playing man to man and he has to engage him and fight before the play even comes around. But on a jet sweep, I got time to run out seven yards and then find my man. You know, all use jet sweeps on every single situation that you want to do something short. Then when they start honoring that, because a jet sweep can get can break you big. It can break you big. Look at um Wilson, what he's been doing on. Same thing. Halfback draws. Even those sometimes are effective in situations like that. The issue is we shouldn't, and sometimes we shouldn't even be throwing the ball. It's like, oh, we got to get this first down. So we're going to throw the ball. Some of the greatest teams pick up third and 12 on a halfback draw. Hut, give it to them. Line pulling. The defense already back towards the sticks. The, the second level is already back to the sticks. So you have running room. So when they see it's a run, they don't recognize it's a run until you're already at the line of scrimmage. They're 10 yards back, you're at the line of scrimmage. But even if it was even, that's a guaranteed five. But you the one who have the speed and momentum, so you should be able to get to seven. And then you you on one side or the other, the, the defense on the other side of the field, they can't catch this play. So it's me, guards pulling, receiver with a great block, it's me against one man. And me going that speed, one move, that's where you use their athleticism. Jet sweeps. Let them make a play. It's going to be a guaranteed seven yards. And then his athleticism will get the first down. And if it don't, we at least got the seven yards. Better field position. Helps with the punt game. Whatever it is. But not these bubble screens where you hike and the quarterback, as soon as that arm goes up to throw, now the defense has the advantage. They can react. Ball ain't even. And while the ball is in the air, while the ball is in the air, now you got the help side, the, the, the first person, not the last, because they ain't going to be a part of this place, but the first person on the help side, if this even got a chance to go deep, they can make that stop. Help side can even react to Hut, oh, he throwing. Let me head to that side of the field because we know he's going to be nifty. Our defense is going to draft him to that sideline. So if he cut back and beat them, hey, he running into one of us, the help side, because the ball was thrown and they can react right away, start heading over there. 
unless you don't uh and, and pitch. Some teams do that and it works. You know, but we're not doing that. We're just straight up ah, and hoping one guy can beat two because the corner barely ever gets the great block. I mean, the receiver barely ever gets the great block. Barely ever. Because as soon as that ball is headed this way, the, the, the um, defense is coming downhill. Before the player even gets the ball, he's waiting and the defense is already on their way. He's waiting and the defense is already on their way. So that, that's a total difference from a handoff and them looking, oh, uh, yeah, he got it. But by the time they realize he got it, he's already at the line of scrimmage. Now it's a meetup, but it's only two guys. And, if, and then it gives your receiver time to get that block, guys. But those are the type of things we need to run. Um, jet sweeps, okay? Not all these passes. I think that's, unless you're going to do one where your offensive line is going to hold it up for three and a half seconds. No, jet sweeps, man. Um... I think we could bring T. Lip back from practice squad as well as Carew. Um, we made a huge move to get Carew to do nothing with him, really. Give him a start. He would do better than Parker um, has last two years. What do you think, Tony? Um, I agree. You know, where I stand right now, they're familiar with the offense and everything. In the defense, they, they, I mean, any player we bring up is familiar. So that's a quicker learning curve, and they can get straight into – straight into improving them versus bringing somebody in from outside and forget improvement you let's learn, teach you the system i mean these are the things you got to think about so i'm all for that i think t lippet for sure Carew, I, I you're right but these guys um i'm not even gonna rule that out this is probably a possibility in the next day or so um but i think it would be a good idea at least to try them out and see what you see um with them having a renewed Opportunity because it's bigger than the one that they have now. All right, TD. I've been seeing, I've been seeing that Coach Gates play calling short throws on long third down plays instead of going for the first down. What do you think about this play calling situation? I just answered that very elaborately. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. Do you trust Gates to make better decisions in future games? In my opinion, we needed to run the ball a lot more in our last game, but. For whatever reason, we barely attempted any runs. You are correct. That was um, abysmal, the amount of runs that we attempted with Drake the other um, day playing the Patriots. Um, I do um, trust his decision making for the future. The thing is, you all have to understand, Gase is um, figuring things out. And against different teams, he's getting more and more familiar with it. Everything's a learning curve. No learning curve. No coach just knows it. I mean, they, they're learning. I mean, you think Bill Belichick has it all? He's watching as much film as Brady, believe it or not. He's scouting more than anybody. The day after the Super Bowl, this man's out scouting. I mean, right back to business. I celebrated last night. I smiled a little. You know? Um, so, at the end of the day, I trust it. Um, but it's a process for him, too. I don't like what I've seen. But some games, we're all proud of what we see. Especially that game with all those plays and trick plays. We were proud of it. So, if we're going to be proud some moments and then like, oh, what are you doing the next? You also have to give time. But some people say he's been here long enough, but he hasn't had the team he wanted long enough. Think about it. And I know that pushes his timeline from over here, but it's the reality. I mean, I think people just fire coaches and GMs and, and players too soon without getting down to the actual root cause, guys. All right. Um, does pineapple belong on pizza? Does pineapple belong on pizza? So I guess my answer will give you an insight of how I look at life and all the issues and everything that happens in life. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Pineapple belongs on whatever you like it on, okay? Do I eat pineapple on pizza? No. I've seen it and just like, okay. Having said it doesn't belong or it does belong. What belongs on pizza is whatever you like on it. That's how I look at even life and everything about life. If it's for you, by all means, who cares what anybody else thinks? Oh, it doesn't belong on there. I like it, so it does. I don't care that you feel that it does or it doesn't. That's your prerogative. That's how I look at things, guys. Um, let me see. I got some replies on that already. Somebody said, um, no, that's a sin. <laughs> that's funny. 
um, Jay Gray, um, Chris Sharp, absolutely it belongs on there. And Nicki Manji, and um, some weird faces. And um, BD Fearless, only if you make bad life decisions. So people had their opinions on pineapple on pizza, I guess. So, um, and I've heard of it before. But uh, Caring 100, do you believe the Bengals are playoff bound? Yes, I do. The Bengals are playoff bound. That's why when we beat them, people are going to say, oh, because the Bengals aren't what uh, people th thought they were. No, they're a good team. That means we bounce back and we do what we needed to do. Just like Tennessee Titans. Oh, after we beat them, oh, well, it just shows they're not going to be what people thought they were. They're 3-1. and one. Come on, guys. Come on. You know, they beat, they beat um the Jags. Jags beat the Patriots. This is the stuff I'm talking about. Matter of fact, that's a full circuit. circle. Dolphins beat the Titans. Titans beat the Jags. The Jags beat the Patriots. The Patriots beat the Dolphins. And everybody getting bent out of shape. Any given Sunday. Okay? Um, but it's just about who's more consistent. Bringing the game plan. All right? So, good question. Um, Kevin McCombs. What's up, man? Um, what's good, TD? I'm good. You see RT17 presser with on to Cincinnati like Belichick? Yeah, I saw it. It was pretty hilarious. Um, but I enjoyed it, especially um, some of the stuff he was saying. Chatter about Gates being on the hot seat and think that is just BS. It is BS. Don't even believe that. If Tannehill, I mean, if um, Gates is on the hot seat and Greer and Tannebaum fires him for any reason, midseason or after season, well, I can't say after season because I, I need to see more, but if it goes this way for the rest of the season with these injuries and he's making the most of it and they fire him, they're, they're looking for a scapegoat for themselves. Because in the first video, I explained in thorough detail on my thoughts to the inner workings of the organization, who's missing their job? Who's not doing what they need to do? Maybe they are all doing their job. But in, regard, in regards to firing somebody, no, we, we would talk about that. Uh, that would be a hot topic on, on TV Pins Talk. All right, so um, uh, what else? Tannenbaum, on the other hand, might be if he doesn't make moves and fill these injury holes and right the ship. What are your thoughts? Well, you can't blame Tanne um, Tannenbaum for injuries. Technically, if we felt like we had a great team before these injuries, Tannenbaum, that's good for them. Him and Grant, that's good that they're doing that. That means they were doing their job. Now you're asking them to do the hardest thing you can do in the NFL, pick up players that's going to perform to get you to the next level midseason? To be honest, to fill every hole, we would have to give up more than we should. That we Than we could. I mean, we can, but no. Now you're talking about really ruining your future. You know, other organization. You won't feel it until down the road. See, the problem of the past, we made decisions that impacted us five, six, seven, eight years later. And then while we're trying to correct those, we made other ones because we can't focus on detail because we're still trying to fix the past. And teams wonder, you ain't did nothing in 20 years. Three mistakes can mean 20 years. Three, just three. It can be the smallest mistakes. Could make 20 years of just bad fortune for your organization. You need a great organization uh, from the top down, accountability, um, action plans, everything it's just business we they always want to say it's just business but are you executing business you see that's what we need guys those are your best organizations period and they have up and down years you know they have up and down years all right doggy dog 1523 last question do you think um frank and drake this isn't the last question is this person's last question do you think frank and Greg, um drake can do something this year after not having very good back-to-back -back games, or do we need to just run the ball more so they can eventually make something happen? Because that's what I think we need to do. There's no secret. We just need to run the ball more, even if it's not working. But then again, that's offensive line. I mean, we need to at least be consistent and coach it up during the game. And if it, and, and if it's not working after about a quarter and a half, then you know what to switch up. But we switched up way too soon in this game. Um, but they'll they'll be fine. They'll they'll get their carries. They'll get some yards and have have a good season. It's just what happened the last two weeks. I think we already learned from it. They were they were glaring. Drake ran the ball three times. That was glaring. He should he probably gonna get the first three rushes in the next game. Even if it's a three and out, he probably gonna get the first three rushes. I mean I'm maybe two, but I'm saying. Um, but they know where they messed up, guys. 
All right, Kevin McCone, Jordan Phillips is gone and was the right, it, and was the right move. Drafting him because you can't teach 6'6", 340. Sure can, in Tanner Bottoms' word. I think um, he might be the last of the fat-cutting um, locker room cleanup. How do you feel about this move? I agree totally 110,048 billion and 26 million percent, whatever, um, with everything you just said. He might be the last of that locker room of the past that Gates that he on vibe with. Um, I don't like that he went to Buffalo. I don't like that. Not because he's going to sting us. But I don't like that he went to Buffalo. We've been picking up Jets players, this, that, that, and this. And the, but they got somebody who's mad right now. He's really upset. He's going to be telling the Buffalo Bills offense, the defense, this is what they do in this. The defense is what they do in that. Does Gates even care enough? Is Gates going to go into the Buffalo games, which are later in the season, which might mean, might mean everything for us? Is he going to go into those games? I don't care that they might know it. Just execute. But at the same token, it's a difference from executing whenever they already know what you're going to do in some situations or certain looks or what disguises. Is Gates going to keep it the same way and say, so what? Execute your game and beat him at it. Is he going to do that or is he going to make some adjustments? I'm a firm believer in your checks, your formations, your looks should change every four games anyway. By the time you get in the playoffs, you can do anything from all from the four quarters that you had in the season. During the first four games, we did a lot of this. They got some good reps on that. In the second quarter, we wanted to work on this and play it real game time. This set, in the third, um, the the um, ninth through the twelfth game of the season, we played a lot of man on man coverage, getting them used to that. That's what I'm a believer in. Switching it up, some may not be that wide, but it, you know. I know it goes by what the other team has, but some of them you got to challenge. Um, but that's what I'm a believer in. But will he do that or keep everything basic? We got what we got, and that's road. You know, is that the kind of um, coaching that we are getting? We don't know, but a lot is to be answered, man. Um, Brennan Zessen going to Cincy this week. Hopefully, we get uh, we can get the W. Awesome, man. Are you going to the game? That's what I want to know. I'm assuming you are. Um, shout it out for our team um, and from TD Fans Talk. Give them a let's go Dolphins for me on the field. Not on the field, but in the stands. Wherever you're going to be, if you're going to be there. But that's what's up. Um, yes, we're going to get that W. Anthony Acosta, do you think Tannehill is an elite quarterback? And do you believe we, the all-around weapon, wait, and do you believe we, the all-around weapon, to a top 10 team in the NFL? I think you meant do I believe he can lead. Um, the all-around weapons to a top 10 team in the NFL. Been a fan since 07, 15 17. Wait, 17, 0, 1, and 15. Fans, um, fans, fans, till I die. I got what you're saying, Anthony. Awesome. Yes, I think, um, Tanny, well, right now, no Tanny Hill is not an elite quarterback. But I'm the reason why I love Tannehill so much is because I know he can be with the right coaching and improvement. I, see, I, I personally, because I'm giving you my real thoughts on Tannehill right now. I personally feel like Tannehill um, was always a good passer, accurate, and smart, and can call your plays, get you in and out of huddles, you know, command the offense. I think all they've done is made that improve. I think they've made that better. It makes him better, but say you got five court categories and Tannehill has always been excellent um, on a scale of one to 10 in those five categories. The first three categories, Tannehill has always been a seven and the other two categories, he's been a four. I think what they've done is took in those three categories at a seven and made them 9.5s, which makes him better, but they're not even working on the other two categories. You know, the following your project uh, progressions, but keeping that peripheral, you know, um, option plays with the wide receivers, the audibles, you know, getting them in and out of different audibles and commanding the offense, never even looking to the sideline for a play. That mic ain't even going to your headset, you know? Um, so 
That's what I think. They improved those first three, but is anybody there to actually improve the last one? I think they just want to make that great and they feel like they can get him by versus making him the best quarterback he can be, which is elite. I think he can be elite, but he needs to work on those small little things. And the crazy thing is people dog him about the three categories when he is spot on in them. He is spot on. But that's my take on that. Um here Bahamas Dolphins shout out to Bahamas Dolphins Jordan Phillips gone who's up next or should they go looking they should go looking I know they're gonna bring some people up um but they should go looking if you ask me um for something real good for a fourth or fifth rounder it's not gonna be easy that's the only problem so we shall see as news comes in we'll go with that that's all we can do um just you know David Godchild I hope he steps up um, he actually had an interesting article this week about the loss too. Y'all go check that article out that how the loss was actually a good thing. And I agree with him. Sometimes you need those losses to punch you right back into place. Punch you right back into place. In my prediction video, I said that we would beat the Patriots and the Bengals would punch us back in our place. But the Patriots beat us. So hopefully that was the punch. Hopefully that was so. In my original estimation, I had us losing to the Bengals only because I felt like we were going to be such at a high from that Patriot W. But now we've come back down to earth. So I really feel bad for the um, Bengals. This should be an interesting game. If we show up and show out, I'm telling y'all, that's going to be all we need to know. If we don't, we're still talking about it. We're still talking about what's going on. All right. Um, We need um, to get someone to replace Raekwon at linebacker. Can't tackle, can't cover. I saw a lot of bad plays. I agree. I, I mean, I'm not going to say replace right away, but I agree. This is one who needs to be watched closely, and there should be conversation on, is this does this need to change? Does this need to replace? Now, here's the tough thing with that, too. With the loss of Rashad Jones and the moving around, yeah, I know he's still playing his position, but there's been times he's been out of his position too because he's had to. And then other times, getting the camaraderie with the guys on the field, you never know. Minka could be, Minka in the nickel could be helping those guys sometimes, talking to them. Rashad can be down there talking to those guys, helping them sometimes, and that's stuff they still need. But Rashad out and Minka having to go back there to the safety, he's trying to worry about what he's doing. Those guys on the island, when they usually get the help, Guys, the, our defense has been talking this year a lot. And I think that's important. When guys are out of position, it's less talking that's happened. You know, so it's a lot of effects. It's a lot of, but at the same token, he still has to be better overall. But it's a lot into that, all right? Um, hell yeah, brother, go Dolphin. Should we get another corner until McCain is back? No, I think if we, um, like we talked about in the first video, moving one of the guys from the squad up, the guy, the guy, the reality is that's not going to fix the issue. Rashad Jones needs to be back. We hope that he's okay to where he's, we'll see him playing very soon. He needs to get back. The, our defense will be a lot more stable to where we can absorb a Bobby McCain out and put somebody out there to manage um, if, if Rashad Jones comes back. Because people underestimate how massively good in the first three games Mika Fitzpatrick was in the first two games. People underestimate how good he was, how many holes were in our defense that he covered. Put, he has to be back in that nickel. That's why it's a trickle effect. Rashad Jones coming back will be huge for our defense overall, even with the Bobby McCain being out a little. And that's temporary. So that's even better, guys. That's a temporary situation. So that's what I think on that, guys. Um, um, Chris Sharp, any thoughts on Phillips being claimed by Buffalo? I just talked about that um, a few questions ago. I don't like it at all, though. I'm telling you, and those are late games in the season. I do not like that. Um, DBZ Freak 117. If that's Dragon Ball Z, I feel you, bro. I love um, DBZ. DB Super now, man. Um, did you see we added a free O line player? Um, he was on the Jets practice squad. What do you think? Oh, you're talking about um, Wesley Johnson. Um, I talked about that earlier, too. Um, I don't know if it was in this video or the first one, but go check it out, both of them anyway. Hopefully, you're watching them. Um, but I go into depth about him and why I like it. I do like it, though, okay? But I don't think he's going to start. Joel Vasquez, what do you think the score will be at the end of the season? I think you mean the record. 
Um, and what is your favorite fruit? It better be mangoes. Wow. Um, first off, my record at the end of the season, I had 12 and 4. I have no reason to get off of that since we're 3 and 1, and that's the pace of 12 and 4. Um, also, in regards to that, um, I think we're going to have the same thing, 3 and 1 in the next four. Um, we play two good teams and two bad teams right now. So we play the Bengals and we play the Bears. They both are 3 and 1. Really, um, I think we need to split those games. Split those games. Don't care how it comes as long as we split them. I would love to win both. That's the goal. But splitting those two games is putting us right where we need to be. And then we um, win the last two, which is the Lions, who is 1-3, and three, and the Houston Texans, who that's 1-3. and three. And that's very doable. You know, 6-2. and two. The problem is our fan base. If we lose against Cincy and beat the Bears, before we get to the Bears week, all hell is going to break loose us going 3-2, and two, which is crazy. Three and two, y'all, and all hell breaking loose. Really, that's it's crazy. You know how many teams would love to be three and two? Well, we're gonna beat the Bengals, and we're gonna be four and one, and then we might go on um, four and two. That's a better look, but it'll still be bad talk. But hey, what if we beat both of them? Five and one, and then going into the Lions in Houston. Shh, guys, it's, it's, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be good. If you don't believe that, then. You just trying to be negative intentionally, it feels like. All right. And yes, as far as my favorite fruit is crazy. It is mangoes, but I love anything. Um, I mean, being in South Florida, you love a lot of different fruits. And it's not just your typical oranges, um, apples and stuff. You know, actually, I don't even eat apples that much. I eat apples. I actually eat apples. A lot. But not like, oh, I love apples. Um, it's mangoes. It's oranges. It's grapefruits. It's... Um, Different things that people don't even know about them, like plums, different type of plums, seed grapes, and all type of different stuff that you barely can find anywhere but Florida. Um, but I love all type of just fruit. But um, that's but mangoes is my best. Um, Trey Parker, I'm off of Trey Parker. If you looked at my last video, you understand why I'm off of it. Okay, um, dude, you should give us a brief update on how the fantasy league is going. Ah, the fantasy league. You know, I'm giving everybody in the fantasy league a little hope right now, making it look like, you know, I'm falling behind intentionally. Well, I'm still in the middle of the pack. I'm two and two, I think. But um, I'm, I'm making them think that they have a chance, but they have no shot. Shout out to number one in the league, Christopher's team. He 4-0. And, oh, and, oh. and these are other subscribers of the channel, guys. Let me give them a shout out real quick. Christopher, 4-0. Undefeated. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna win I'm gonna win it all, so I'm definitely giving him hope. Um born ready team, um three and one. Um good job and playing tough. Put up more points than Christopher um all season. Actually number one in points out of every team, but three and one. That's why even the great teams with points can be beat. Um Anthony Jim is in third place, three and one as well. Good solid point um total. Going long, fourth. That's, it's three and one, the solid point total. Let's see, it's all bunched up and close, guys. Mega Power is three and one, solid points. G5 is ranked six, three and one. Mega Powers was number five, by the way. G5 is three and one, um, closer to me on the points. I ain't doing too good. Blue Fingers, Sean. I can't believe Sean ahead of me, but I guess so. I let him win. Let him win that first week. Um, he's two and two, and I'm also two and two. Um, everybody else in the league, um, you're going to have to um, be above me to earn um, special recognition. No love lost, but hey, um, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll call them out, you know, because, you know, anybody behind me, they just no good at fantasy. Um, hopefully, I can stay ahead of them. But great ones, Perfect Bill, Don Shula the Goat, Fins Team 2, Wake Up Call, and the Mysterious Ghost, SJ Wolves. Ooh, we don't even know if they're playing, but they lost every game. We know that they're not playing, so everybody's going to get that win, that W. All right, so that's what's going on on the fantasy. But Chris, man, Chris, don't get too comfortable. I'm coming. Don't worry. You'll see. And Born Ready, you, this will probably be your last week up there. Most of y'all will be our last week. Time for me to start leapfrogging people. I'm about to go into my prime in fantasy. But um, special shout out to y'all guys. I'm actually going to try to make a video here and there about what's going on in fantasy. Um, Joel Vasquez, if Ryan gets injured, is that it for the Dolphins? Or do you think um, the backup will make it that down? Well, those, what you meant? 
Of course it's over. That would be like the big biggest cherry on top that you never wanted. I don't even have to elaborate. Yes, it will be over. Um, Billy Crenshaw. So I guess after Sunday, the injuries will be excused for why Ryan Tannehill, RT17, um, won't see. Uh, won't see open wide receivers. Um, man, I hope after this blowout, you will see the light, TD. I hope I am wrong, but we don't have a chance against the Bengals with RT17 under center. Billy, you couldn't be more wrong. Um, gosh, man, I'm mad that I forgot his name again because on YouTube, he makes great videos. I'm going to find his name real quick because I want y'all to go subscribe to him. I love how he breaks down the game. Even I agree with, I disagree with some of them, but it at least gives you a good insight on plays and breakdowns of what's actually happening, guys. Hold on. Let me see if I got it real quick. I know he's in here, so give me five seconds. And I should definitely have one. Man, I'm subscribed to his channel, so I know I have some. Man, why am I not seeing it? I'll get y'all the name, guys. I'll get you guys the name of whose channel it is. But I think you should definitely subscribe to him. He does, you know, um, analysis on specific plays in the game, breakdowns of the touchdown, how it happened, why it went wrong. And I love that he does that. Some things I don't agree with. Um, and maybe, hopefully, I can link up with him one day. I like to talk um, with him about some of the plays, even the ones we I disagree with because it's some good, insightful stuff he's given. Um, but I saw a lot of things. He had one video on, like, six misreads from Tannehill. And when you look at those plays, it was definitely opportunity for Tannehill. But in that opportunity, I think we forget the factor of the quarterback being aware of the pass rush as well. Like literally, most of the plays misreads, Tannehill missed because he would start on the, on the right and go through his progression. Knowing he has a 2.5 second line, he sees something that's possible at the end, and he's throwing, but if he would have came back, we had a wide open man. The, the back was blocking, but then he veered out after those progressions, which I guess is the next pr progression, but you don't know what's happening in the coach's locker room. Oh uh, man, I was coming back around to the, to the man, but I got sacked. And the coaches are seeing the breakdowns on the old line in certain situations where the coach is literally saying, you got 2.5, go through your progressions and get rid of the ball. We can't take losses by you trying to come back, especially if you already feel the heat. And a lot of those plays, guys, where he's going through with the man comes wide open, the pocket is collapsing. He would have to literally be like this. Oh, I see you, bam. But it's not realistic in a lot of cases. And people will say, well, other quarterbacks are doing it. No, they don't. They have that extra second. And when they transition, they see him. And that's why a lot of them have like fragile throws, but they make it work. Sometimes it'd be frazzled like a quick dump. Why you think the back is always catching it low on the ground? Because it's easy to make a little 15 like out to the side, not even past the line of scrimmage, a quick a pad. Easy. But why do you think a lot of running backs end up catching them close to the ground or overthrown and they got to jump up to get it and start running? Because it's the last progression that sometimes they don't even look at because that's too long and they about to get hammered or they don't want to lose the yards. And in those situations, it's, too, it's tough, but he can get better at it. But I don't put that on him. That's the, that's the development of him. But the game plan right now might be don't go to the last progression. Every time we go to it, Tannehill hold the ball too long. No, he went through his progressions. Oh, he need to go through progressions quicker. No, plays have specific timing. There's no such thing as go through progressions that much quicker. You need to look open or not, open or not. Matter of fact, whether this person is open or not, you're already looking towards the next one, but then you realize, yeah, they're open. You're already moving. It's coming across. You're looking for the glaring, whoa. That's what you're looking for first. That's your real progression. And through that, whoa, you're, you're, you're statistically, that, that shit, that might actually develop. He had a little separation. Where is it now? You know, it's, it's, it's a lot, guys. 
but we put that on Tannehill all the time. He might not even be able to get to the next progression because right now we got a 2.5 or a 3.5 line. That only think about the quarterbacks that get to the sixth progression. One, two, three, four. It did the back draw out after all of that ain't open. Now is anything back open on a comeback? Or it, you know, it, it goes deep. If they got a line, Big Ben be back there. Brady be back there. They it's like they're skating. Y'all know y'all see them bouncing sometimes. Anytime they bouncing like that, oh my gosh. You were in trouble. Anytime they bounce, how many times did you see that step in a lot of these quarterbacks at halftime? We know what we have. We say our offensive line looked great the first two games, the first three games. But that's also coaching, too. We know we got a 2.5 line, so let's make sure our offense has to work with that for now until we get better. We just want to look at a player. What's not happening? Oh, he's not it. It's too much more that goes into football. Too much more. It's not just about that. And, 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 and I think some of the fans get caught up on the basic surface, what they see. I get that, the eye test. But if you don't know the ins and outs and all the things that has to happen for something to take place, then it, it's tough for you to say. But, I mean, you're entitled to your opinion based off of the knowledge that you have. So that's why I don't get mad at people too much when they say stuff about Tannehill. But I'm going to argue it. I'm going to disagree, especially if you're not stating these facts. Because if you're stating these facts, you already know. You don't have that same opinion. You don't. There's too much more at stake. Just like in that video. I love the videos, by the way. I, I hope he keeps doing them and even make more. Um, but it's stuff like that. Are we considering that? He's right and Tannehill missed the read. But do we know why? Is it just because, because Tannehill never saw it, by the way. Let's just be fair. Tannehill came across and he saw something and he tried. He never even looked. It's the last, it's the fifth option. It's clearly because it was a delay. They were in the backfield and they veered out. That ain't the start of a play. Ain't no play that say hike. All right, we're going to wait for you to add like you blocked, but you my first option. I'm waiting on you. All right, now you're going out. There's no such thing. Anytime that happens, that's a quarterback going through progressions and saying it's the dump down there. Dump downs are there all, all day. But that's also for the coaches to say, hey, this dump down been there all day. They got the tablets on the sideline. That's coaching. It's been there all day. I need you to go through your fifth progression. Let's run that again, matter of fact, because they're giving us the same look. Let's run that same play again. And we'll even tell the offensive line, this is a play on y'all. If y'all can have blocking time, we might spring something. Do your best on this play. Let's see if, if we're right. That's what it's about, game planning in the game. But we put that on Tannehill. I don't. I, I disagree. Couldn't be more wrong. Um, Nick Manji, um, if it was one position in football you would play, what would it be and why? You cannot use the position you played before. It would be quarterback. I would play quarterback. Um, because I think of the game at such a high level, all the aspects of it. I think as a quarterback, I can not only, I mean, of course, I'm not in NFL shape to be a quarterback. I'm just answering this question. If I was and I was playing football, I would be playing um, quarterback. I mean, I can, you know, don't get me wrong. But as far as the endurance and stuff like that, man, I ain't been running 10 miles and lifting, you know, 400 pounds and doing all that type of stuff. I don't train my body like that. I mean, I'm trying to train it now to get in better shape. But I'll be a quarterback because I can have control over the offense. I can have my vision that I believe in and help t the coach's vision, teach them how to execute, teach the other players as well while I'm working on my craft, healthy habits and all that stuff. And that's what I would be. And not even from like the celebrity standpoint of being a quarterback, but just to build a winning team and be one of the major parts of it. And Tannehill, man, he's our major part, y'all. Y'all got to stop being down on them. Do you think these injuries, um, now the Dolphins need to do a roster overhaul next year and replace them, these older players with younger ones, less injury prone? I personally think we need a lot more draft picks. I trust our front office with drafts now. Um, that's a great question. It's going to be the last one, and I'll make another video after this, the last video. Um, that's a great question though. And let me tell you why <clears throat> we don't need to do an overhaul. What we need to do, because these players, 
being their age now in the NFL, they may not have a future. But they're going to feel like I can still be great. So this is an opportunity for the Miami Dolphins to re-sign them and save so much money. They can be your backup, but now we don't have to go look for the depth. You got your depth. They're coming off of injuries, but they're solid. <clears throat> they're solid. You can't find better depth off of an injury. They know the plays. They know what you're trying to accomplish. They know that other teams may not even take the risk. Talk to them now. Are you willing to put that work in? If you believe in them, re-sign them. If they're making $8 million now, tell them I'll give you 2.6. They'll take it because other teams may not even take the chance. And even if they do, let's try it out for 1.5. Give them a little something. 2.6. Have the best second string you can buy. Now you're drafting your free agency, locking in positions. You ain't dealing with no rebuild. You ain't dealing with no rebuild. Think about it. Think about going in the off center. We need a center. We need a guard. We need defensive tackles. I'm going to put two. Defensive tackles. That's it. Think about it, y'all. We don't need safeties. <clears throat> the corners are doing very well. Xavier and Bobby. Um... Mika in the nickel, amazing. Oh, and we need, I'm going to say two linebackers. Because we're going to go max of getting the best we can. Now watch this. Three rookies this year are panning out. Four, actually, with Jason Sanders. But let's just say you get three of your rookies that pan out. I'm going to cut that down. Two of our um, next year rookies are going to be superb for us. Superb. We need six positions. Two of them are going to be rookies. It makes it so much easier, especially with the money that we're going to be saving next year. The money that we're going to have next year. Bringing four guys in on a team. Ain't got to be your tens. But you bring a starting center in. A good, good center. A good guard. Offensive line taken care of. Now, And you already got the backups that are here. Backups already here. Don't even got to worry about the line in the draft. I mean, you might, it depends. You might do it in a draft or you might do it in free agency. But now you have more to work with. You already got your backups. Solidified backups. Your starters last year are now backups because they're coming back from injury and they're older. But hey, they, they were solid for us. They were actually really good for us. And if you, if you guys say they weren't good, come on. Y'all losing your mind. You're losing your mind. So even after an injury... 70% of what they were for us is great at backup. It's great at backup. <clears throat> These guys were playing 8.5 caliber football. They come back a seven, we're good. In the backup? <clears throat> I mean, they don't lose their smarts. They just got to make sure their physical is there. <clears throat> but they're also a backup. So they're not taking as much as the pounding and the beating. You got your, you got your um, backups. Your, your, your depth is already set up. Now you're bringing in impact. Not big names, not the Ajayis, not the Landrys, not the Sues, not the big names, though. You're bringing in guys just like you brought them in, but you're bringing them in that's four years younger. Now you're trying to get some more value shopping. You don't need all seven of those draft picks. First and second round, hope you hit big. Trade three of those later picks for another second. Or how can you get another first? You can lock some stuff in right now. And, it, and then your team goes to being experienced and the youngest. And, and, and impact. I mean, that's a huge opportunity. That's a great question. But we don't start no overhaul. We go resign them. The Dolphins have been notorious for taking players who have coming off of an injury that a team that got rid of and using them. And they've been working out for us. Both linemen this year. You can't say they weren't balling. It reminds me of, um, it reminds me of, what's his name? Um, gosh, Brent Grimes. Um, it was even other people in our defense that we, man, they were coming off of injuries from other teams. They didn't want them no more. They balled out for us. It, it, it's happened for us a lot. That's actually, you can find some value in that. So why not keep your own? We know what they did. It ain't like they were choppy and they went out, you know? 
they were balling. So lock down your death, and now you got six spots you want to fill. And it may not even be six because some of the guys already on the squad might have elevated by then. But I'm going with what we have today. We got six things we want to fill. Two linebackers, two offensive linemen, and two tackles. Nothing else. I don't know what y'all talking about if you say anything else. Nothing else. Receivers, we, we have too many. Hell, and it's not hard to find a good value receiver. Our offense ain't for the high flyer that, that the Landry's, the uh, Antonio Browns. It's not necessary. That's not what we built for. We built to bring in that 7.5 guy and everybody do their job. That's the organization we have. Everybody else is flashy, but they're not even getting it done. I know they're looking good in the, mo in the meantime. 11 wins every year. Got the fan base pumped, but they never make it anymore. They never win it all. Or they won it all once in the last 20 years, and they feel like, hey, we still good. Come on. That's not what, how, that's not the approach our team is taking. But we only need those six things. And for me, before the end of this season, I think they need to address two just in trades to make this season still um, good. Address those in trades. You go into the offseason with four. You got two, you got a first round, you got a second round. And you got free agency? Come on. That's the easy, easy all season. Easy all season. Matter of fact, a quiet one. People like, well, we didn't see much from the Dolphins. You know, they picked up this team's um center from last year. He's a good solid player. And they picked up this one. Those are solid moves, but they didn't make any splashes to get it done. We right back to where we were the year before with better depth now. Not just depth. This year we got depth, but better depth. We're right back with better depth. Come on, y'all. You got to look at it. It's the way you look at it, guys. But I've been going long on this video. I'm going to cut this one. Then I'm going to make the last one because it's not that many more questions. Um, but thanks for being patient with me, guys. But I'm just giving y'all my true thoughts um, on answering what y'all asking me. All right, this TD Fins Talk. See you in a little bit.